Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today we are making a really quite simple but just downright gorgeous glossy lip stain. The thing that makes this project really quite simple is that it is mostly comprised of three pre-blended products available from TKB Trading. I'm combining their VersaGel Gloss Base with their Oil Fusion at their recommended amount of 2 to 1, and then including some of their Film Fix to increase the wear time of the gloss. To that base, I've added 6% dyes to give a gorgeous lip stain. In the video and the blog post, I've used blends of different FD&C dyes, but I've also tried this with Carmine and that works beautifully as well. Because 94% of the ingredients in this formulation are from TKB Trading, and this isn't a sponsored video, these are just ingredients that I purchased myself and have been enjoying playing with and I, I wanted to share this with you. But because those ingredients are from TKB Trading and I haven't found them anywhere else, you know, I had to order them internationally out of the States, I know this isn't a terribly accessible project for my viewers and readers outside of the United States. If that's the case for you, please make sure you're checking out the blog post linked in the description box below. I have created quite a few other lip gloss formulations over the years and there's also two in my book, a vegan one and a non-vegan one. So if you want to try this formulation with a different base, I do have quite a few different options made from ingredients that are more readily available worldwide. The making part of this formulation is pretty easy. We're just mashing everything together in a plastic bag, which is what TKB Trading recommends for working with their gloss base because it's quite sticky. <laughs> The hard part is actually the filling of the tube because the mixture is quite viscous and it's very heavily pigmented and the opening on lip gloss tubes is, you know, it's not very big. So that's the tricky part. So I've made a lot of these <laughs> over the last couple of months and I'm sharing with you sort of the best tips and tricks that I have learned and developed to fill a lip gloss tube with this thick, sticky, highly pigmented uh, mixture with the least amount of like hair pulling out frustration. <laughs> Now, of course, we need a application demo. I'll show you here, me putting on the different colors, and then at the end of the video, there are some close-up swatches on my wrist. So this is the one that we make in the video. And this is the one that we make in the blog post, which is linked in the description box below, so make sure you are checking that out as well. This glossy lip stain is long wearing, very comfortable, and I'm absolutely in love with it, and I hope you will be too. Don't forget to check out the blog post linked in the description box below for more information, including links to all of the ingredients. But come on, let's get started. All right, so here's everything we're going to need for this very simple glossy lip stain. So we have a beaker on a scale that is accurate to two decimal points of a gram. We have a Ziploc bag, uh, and this is not going to be salvageable. This is a, a waste product of this DIY, unfortunately, but it is the least messy way <laughs> to do this. We have our pigment, so I'm using a blend of Red 33 Lake and Red 7 Lake to create a sort of berry hue. We have the VersaGel lip gloss base. We have the oil fusion, which helps uh, give the lip gloss base a better sort of skin feel. And we have Film Fix, which helps reduce wash off. And so uh, everything here is available from TKB Trading, though I did get this tube from Yellow Bee, uh, and though TKB Trading sells uh, similar ones, something I really like about this one is that it has a, a brush tip rather than a sort of uh, spongy little foam doe foot tip. And make sure whatever you put it in has an orifice reducer because that makes application a heck of a lot easier. So to set up for the making, you're gonna wanna open up your zip top bag, kind of locate a corner and push that down into the bottom of your beaker and kind of open the bag up around it. You want a clear shot down to the corner of the bag as you are weighing your ingredients in. So we'll pop that on our scale and fire up. So we will start with the VersaGel, which you can see is a transparent, sort of viscous liquid that comes in a zip top bag with a sort of screw cap on it. So this is really quite, quite viscous and definitely the best way to work with it is to try to touch it sort of as little as possible. So we want 3.55 grams of it. If you overshoot, you're gonna wanna go in with uh, 
spoon and, and pull some out gradually. It's really, really easy to overshoot because you're just kind of measuring it out in blobs. Up next is 1.77 grams of oil fusion and 0.31 grams film fix. If you want to learn more about these ingredients, please make sure you are clicking through to the blog post linked in the description box below. Our last two ingredients are our pigments. So we're going to need 0.36 grams of pigment total and I'm going to do half and half. So this is 6% pigment, so it'll be 3% of the number seven and 3% of the number 33. And it should be noted that the uh, maximum allowable limit for number 33 inlet products is 3%. Once you have all the ingredients in your bag, you're going to want to sort of make sure there's not too, too much air in there and seal it and then start mashing things together. We're going to try to keep things relatively localized to this one corner just so that you know, you're keeping it all together and you have an easier time making sure you're blending it all together uh, thoroughly. All right, so with the smushing done, that's the easy part. Uh, the tricky part of this is getting it into our tube without making a huge mess and without it taking a really, really long time and just being really, really frustrating. So I found that if you use a spatula, you can kind of start to consolidate the gloss into one corner of the bag. And the first thing we're going to do, I'm gonna pop the bag into a hot water bath. So this is a beaker that I've just put some tap water in and boiled in the microwave because the warmer the mixture is, the less viscous it'll be and the easier it is to squeeze it uh, through a tiny little hole and into our tube. Once the gloss has warmed up from that water bath, quickly remove the bag, dry it off, and then we're gonna take a pair of scissors here and we are going to snip a wee little bit off the opposite corner of the bag. That's important. Do not snip that corner of the bag because now what we're going to do, basically bundle this up into a fine tip and try to get it as far into our container as we can before we start squeezing the gloss through. Because I find if it starts collecting up here where it's narrower, it's an, just it just kind of clumps and then creates a like a solid break and it's really hard to get the gloss through and into the tube and it's really 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 frustrating and you make a huge mess and just ugh, yuck. So I have found that this works a lot better. You will still need to wrap on the tube to get the lip gloss to go all the way down to the bottom but at least you're starting at like the 75% mark um, rather than um, right up at the neck of the container. So yeah, again, I find the using the spatula to kind of squish stuff through the bag. Found that you can get air bubbles that can sort of hinder the product going down. So sticking a toothpick in there to just break the surface tension helps. Yeah, you can see that this is definitely a very messy project. So make sure you're not using anything that you don't mind getting dyed, whatever the color of your lip product is. So once you've squeezed as much product as you can out of the bag, uh, we are ready to start capping this up. So we're gonna wanna pop in the orifice reducer. And now uh, we're gonna wanna give this a wipe down. So grab some more paper towel. And make sure you are leaving enough room when you fill the tube for the wand. That's a, an easy thing to forget, but it's obviously quite important. So if your tube's a slightly different size, or perhaps you're just quite a lot better at getting the lip gloss out of the container, you know, that's a thing you're going to want to keep in mind. An easy way to get more product off of your tube is to spray a piece of paper towel with some isopropyl alcohol and then wipe it again and you can see we are getting uh, more sort of residue that the dry wiping wasn't picking up. So here we are 
a gorgeous tube of glossy lip stain that's super customizable. So I can do a little bit of a swatch here. With this product, you really want to make sure you are wiping excess off at the mouth of the container. I find that it's easier and just generally a better application experience to do a few layers rather than trying to go through a full bore on um, the, just the one. So that's absolutely gorgeous. I also want to do a swatch of the one that I made for the blog. So this one's a slightly different color blend that has less of the red 33 and actually has a little bit of yellow in it as well. And there we go. So we just made a really simple, highly pigmented, gorgeous, glossy lip stain. So you can customize the color blend to your heart's content and make tons of these. And yeah, I, I definitely have as I've been working on finessing this formulation. I love these and I've been wearing them a lot. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and please make sure you are reading the blog post linked in the description box below. You'll find a lot more information there, including information about substitutions, scaling, shelf life, and where to buy all the ingredients and some discussion of alternatives if you don't have of easy availability to ordering things out of the United States since I did get all of these ingredients from TKB Trading and I haven't found them anywhere else. And I'm not American either, so I feel your pain. So yeah, please make sure you're reading the blog. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.